everyone. Today we're joined by Carlson Young, who wrote, starred, and directed The Blazing World, premiering at the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. Hi, Carlson. It is so nice to get to meet you. I know it's over Zoom, but at least we get to talk. Where are you at right now? Um, I'm actually in Austin. I uh, flew, flew in from LA last night. So Well, yes. my family's in Austin. So say hello to them. Maybe my mom's like walking my dog in the street. I don't know. But I'm in Dallas right now. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So you're actually a Texas native, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm, um, I'm from Fort Worth. We rolled into pre-production on this film, The Blazing World, in the beginning of March. Um, so then, you know, the pandemic came and we had to regroup and we were shooting in August. So quarantine and this whole experience has been interesting because I've, I've been really, really busy. Yeah, I mean, we were all eating potato chips on our couch and you were shooting a movie in five months. <laughs> It's a little different. <laughs> you should be yes. impressed. Like yeah. I'm impressed. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Speaking thank you. of quarantine, you were in a show that blew up. I have to mention it. Emily in Paris. You yeah. played Brooklyn Clark. I was doing all my research and I was like, <laughs> she looks so familiar to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, she played Brooklyn Clark. Did you expect it to blow up that much? No, I mean, it was obviously like a pretty psychotic character and you do, um, you know, I've done a lot of like TV work and yeah. people like see it or maybe they don't see it and usually it doesn't matter, whatever, <laughs> whatever way it goes will be great. But um, Emily in Paris really blew up. I, I, I don't think you, anyone could have predicted this sort of right. collective conscious of um, everyone's at home on their couch. So to get a little bit of fantasy Paris land was um you know something that everybody was really open to but you yeah. know I everyone to... needed it we all pretended yeah. like we were going to Paris with you yeah I, mean, I was like trying to like be like I was like Isla Fisher in Wedding Crashers That's yes I mean. oh my gosh <laughs> That's my jumping off point as she interest. was wow good inspo but <gasps> back to your the important stuff is your current venture the blazing world I mean, this movie's all you. I mean, you wrote, directed, starred in this film. How does it feel putting out something that you had so much creative say in? Well, um, it's it's a creative. It's my baby. I'm I'm very I'm very happy with it, and I'm proud of it. It's it was a long journey, you know, finding my identity as an artist and my voice um, as just a writer and director, and I. Uh, I feel like everything that I've done has prepared me for, for, for this. So it feels, it feels really nice. That's awesome. I mean, it takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of confidence to be a woman in this, in the entertainment industry. Anyways, yeah. and clearly you have a lot of it. And our audience is actually majority female. We're very femme film over here. So okay. I wanted to know if you have any advice about being mm -hmm. confident in yourself so funny that you say confident like I struggle with confidence um no way you <laughs> not I, a chance. it's this thing you have to it's a daily battle of yeah. you know of believing in yourself <laughs> but um yeah I mean my my advice for for any for any woman out there chasing their passion whatever that is is to accept that you um that you're worthy and that your voice is needed and, and necessary and uh plays plays a part in why you're here on earth i think it's important hearing it from you because i mean to be fair everyone struggles with confidence but like yeah. we look at people on tv and we're like they have to be the most confident person in the world and then hearing you say like you struggle with it, it's gonna help someone out there who is like oh my mm. gosh everyone struggles yes. with it. So you shot this movie in Dripping Springs, Texas, right? Yeah. So I have a, my family has a home in Wimberley. So it's like 10 okay. minutes away from it. So we go to Dripping Springs all the time. Oh, wow. I'm, I was like trying to see if I knew any of the locations. And I was like, not that Dripping Springs isn't beautiful. Dripping Springs. Right, right, right. Don't come at me guys. Like I love it. But 
it was the set was beautiful i was trying to recognize how did you find you. those places it, the austin film commission put together um put together a list for us we went and scouted locations all over austin and um bastrop and wimberley and 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 everywhere and when we when we came to that house it was actually the first the first location that we scouted and it just doesn't look like austin it doesn't look like texas it doesn't look like you're like where yeah where is this where is this place so it's like a gem it was truly so beautiful it's definitely not my house but <laughs> We do have a house out there somewhere. <laughs> did you did you get to like, I know it was during quarantine when you shot, but did you get to go anywhere? Like the breweries or Salt Lake no. Barbecue maybe? No, 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 no. Nobody <laughs> in, nobody out. Well, yeah. we'll have to get you back. I mean, you're in Austin. You could drive up there in an hour, but- I would love to. It was cool. It was like hometown kind of being seen on the big screen. So that was really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So this movie deals with grief or I guess- finally deals with grief, I, I should say, mm. in a very interesting and haunting sort of way. Um, what do you want people to take away from this film? I don't want to put really anything too firm out there because the way everybody experiences film is different and really subjective. But, um, you know, I think that hopefully it puts people in sort of a self-reflective state and maybe they start to think of how there are things maybe that they need to address or overcome maybe from childhood um, mm -hmm. and just working through trauma really. It was like an experience. It was, almost, it was Alice in Wonderland-esque and it was like, my mind was going all over the place. It really opens up your imagination. So mm -hmm. it was great. So thank you so much. And yeah. final, final thing is premiering at the Sundance Film Festival 2021 Film festivals are virtual now. We know this. So how can they watch your film? Yes. Well, you can um, you can go to Sundance, uh, the website, and they've got it. It's pretty, inter the interface is pretty user friendly. And you just go to, um, we are screening uh, January 31st at 3 p.m. And then also February 2nd in the morning. So um, should just be pretty easy for you to click on it. You can add a single film ticket and watch it from the comfort of your own home, which is pretty cool. Thank you so much for talking to me. It was so yeah. lovely to talk to you. Thank you for having me.